It's time once again to slip into your camel, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. Welcome back to another episode of the Up North Journal, everybody. I'm host Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with Dan Defaw. Before we get started, we want to help you save some money. That's right, folks. Uh, don't forget to use our promo codes to save that money. And let's start off with BuckBates.com. That's right, the brick-and-mortar store of BuckBates down at Sterling Heights, Michigan at 15 and Dodge Park. Go over there. If you're on the website, BuckBates.com, use the promo code UNJ20. That will get you 20% off your order. For those of you who are looking for Easy Cut products, make sure you go to EasyCutProducts.com. And when you're there, use the UNJ promo code unj 15 off to save 15% off you. Your order. And let's not forget Lincoln Roan over at Packermax.com. It's never too early, never too late to think about the Packermax. Go on over to Packermax.com, use the promo code UNJ25. That'll give you $25 off your order over at Packermax Outdoor. For those of you looking for some new firearms and firearm products, make sure you go over to the islandarmory.com. While you're there shopping, use the promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order there. If you shot that bird of a lifetime and you want it mounted, don't forget Troublesome Creek Taxidermy. We've had them live on the show. We've talked to them. Uh, You want to get 10% off your order, go to Facebook, go to troublesome.creek.7, find their website. If you go to our website, UNJ, make sure to click on the button to download the form. You get 10% off over there using the code UNJ10. Looking for that game call, whether it be a squirrel, whether it be goose, duck, deer, make sure you go to JPO Game Calls. Look for them at jpogamecalls.com. And while you're there shopping, use the UNJ10 promo code to save 10% off your order. And Miller Deer Tracking, the man that seems to never sleep during deer season, get 20% off your next deer tracking uh, using the promo code UNJ20. Look for Miller Deer Tracking on Facebook or give him a call over at 810-240-4891. Looking for the hottest new plastics to take on the water, whether it be hard water or soft water? Make sure you go over to southernindianabaitco.com. While there, use the UNJ promo code UNJ10 to save 10% off your order. Gear Camp Coffee, folks. We drink it every night on the show. You want to try it? You can go to the brick and mortar store at 15 and Dodge Park at Gear Camp itself or go to DeerCampCoffee.com. Also use our promo code UNJ10. You get 10% off your order. And don't forget, get a bag of the UNJ Medium Roast Blend there as well. All right, Danny. Where's our live view camera look from tonight? Welcome back to another live episode from the UNJ cabin. Tonight's live look, looking out over Lake Michigan, up in Empire, Michigan. Looking out over the lake, uh, it is 74 degrees and it looks like we might have some storms rolling in. I don't want storms. Well, it's the west side of the state first. No, no storms tonight. Right? Look at that water. I know, right? That water needs to be kayaked. Well, you know, it would be a good idea if somebody went and did that. It w- this was a live camera, folks. It, it's it trying. Yeah, it's trying to refresh. This is actually, well, I'll come off it until it comes back live maybe here. Right. See if you can get it going again. We can see the waves going. Yeah, we can see everything. And it's one of those cameras we've had on before that it does a 180. So it's kind of cool. But it looks like they got storms rolling in on the west side of the state over there. This is actually exactly where we put in last week when we were on vacation. Oh, it's yeah. out. And you get a playback error. There so, you go. So it's done. <laughs> it's done. We we got it while we could. So right, exactly. But uh, welcome back. Another episode of North Journal Live tonight. And last week we talked about fishing. We're going to talk some more about fishing tonight, but we're going to stay completely on the water. We are, and uh, it was a great show last week with Patrick from Hud's Lures. Uh, got great feedback on feedback feedback on the show last week you hungry no actually no i'm not my daughter took me out to dinner and it was all good you put on the feedback i I did put on the feedback that is no doubt there so uh yeah we're gonna head out we're gonna talk a little fishing in the second half of the show but the first half of the show we are going to talk about your adventures of kayaking but we're going to be a little technical about it but i know i said it in the live drop that you had made some cold brew. Second batch this season, but first on the show. What are you making? This is Deerlicious. Deerlicious. From Deer and uh, speaking of that, uh, a big shout out to Deer Camp Mayo. 
they are up and running. So if anybody's heading up north and they're going to go through Mile, why don't you stop up at the Deer Camp location up in Mile? And it looks like uh, they just got their two new flavors up there as well. The Butterscotch Sugar Time and What a Dandy Whiskey Barrel Flavor. Which, I gotta stop at the store and uh, <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. So, but anybody heading up there? Stop uh, in. Right, exactly. Support your locals. Speaking of, you know, staying with the kayak. Well, thing, before we got, you go there, I got one got more shout out. Tonight. It's, I know we're talking, we're July. Uh, one more shout out for, we're getting that time of year, Jake's Day, up over at... Uh, Williams Gunsight is happening August 5th. I think that's the first Saturday in August. It always is. Right. So, Jake's Day over there. You go over there, free free admission for everybody under 17. Uh, they have must have a garden, guardian, uh, BB gun, trout pond, fly tying, archer shooting. Get over there and, and, and check over uh, the Flint River chapter of NWTF for their Jake Day. There you go. But... I just thought I'd throw one of my paddling shirts on that I, I use, and this came from the Osabo River store on the Osabo River in Oscoda, Michigan. So if you're ever in Oscoda, uh, you're looking for some beverages, some snacks if you're on the beach, but if you're paddling, you stop in there, you can do the same. You can also get some active wear. Okay. It's got a lot of shirts and stuff, uh, cool things there. So uh, friends... Kind of, kind of some new friends that we found up there. Very nice. You, you meet a lot of people kayaking, right? Absolutely. Adam Wynn has joined us in the cabin as well. Um, but um, so you got out of town and you headed up to the western side of the state. You know, there's lots of places in Michigan that I love. But the more Nancy and I visit the west, northwest side of the lower peninsula, the more we fall in love with it. And that's where we went back to. Uh, we went back to Interlochen, State Park, Michigan State Park. We'd been there one other time, and you know we kind of went in with no major plans. You okay. know, it was just like, okay, we're going to take the kayaks with us. We're going to take the big ones with us in case we hit some good open water. We get we get the opportunity, and we were just going to go and and kind of wing it. And you know sometimes those are the best ways to take a vacation and not have an itinerary just booked like oh this day we gotta do this we gotta do that we gotta do that we gotta do that sometimes when you, you feel do, rushed you either feel rushed and then if something goes wrong you don't get to a certain spot or, or something it yeah. just kind of like the wheels fall off it's like yeah oh. yeah but when you go in like you said no preconceived itinerary let's just hit it yeah you know we were you know 30 30 35 miles from empire sleeping bear dunes Glen Arbor, uh, Glen Lake, you know, Crystal River, and we were camping right on Duck Lake and Green Lake there at Interlochen. And, you know, we just said, you know, let's take the boats, let's go see what we can get into. It's 4th of July week, let's have some fun. Exactly. You know, and that's kind of how we started off, you know. Was the campground packed? It was busy. Okay. But being busy, you know much about Interlochen? Nah, I've been through it, and nah, I wouldn't well, say I've stayed right across, Right across the road, from the state park, I mean, like right across the road, is the interlocking camp for musicians. Yep. You know, and it's high school kids, college kids. I think some big name acts do come up there and help with some of that stuff. I don't know a lot about it, but there's always a lot of people in, in the area. Okay. A lot of buzz going on. The campground, though, for the most part, up until the last weekend that we were there, the first weekend was quiet all the way up until Friday of the next week. You know, okay. there was a lot of kids there, but it just, it wasn't noisy. It was just really laid back and mellow, which was beautiful. It was perfect, you know, right? for getting out of town what we want. Uh, you know, set up camp real quick, got everything done, made some s'mores first night. Of course, got to have s'mores. Right, so, fire. Fire the whole nine yards. So we decided, you know, start looking like, where do we want to go? What do we want to do? And I just, I got an app on my phone. I said, well, let's check the wind speeds of Lake Michigan, what's going to happen. And I think you've got it called up there on your computer it's called wind finder and for anybody going out on the water you know whether you're a fisherman whether you're a kayaker a boater a uh, pleasure boater what have you especially on big water you need to know what's coming at you before you get out there and get in trouble so we use this a lot here like on Saginaw Bay up in the thumb area on Lake Huron we've used it up on the north shore of Lake Huron in the upper peninsula to just to check wind speeds and it'll give you wind direction at the current time uh, within a, an hour or two of each other. 
and it'll also it gives you the direction and the speed. So that's what you need to know. You don't want to get out there and get blown offshore and can't get back in in a kayak. Right. right. And for those that are listening on the the podcast, you got to come over watch on Facebook live because what you can't see is what we're showing now is we're actually showing the map of the wind speed and it's actually if you look at it, it it's color co coded so if you're looking at it you notice how it goes from like a on your left a green to a, like a purple on the right of the screen and what that actually did is you see the color bar on the left it's this is in miles per hour so it's going, you know, in the, the, that purple area, which is over land right now, is anywhere from zero to maybe eight miles an hour. Well, go go up to the Straits of Mackinac. All like, right. Can you yeah. drag that map and, and sh show the Straits of Mackinac? Let's go. And, 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 and if and, Nancy's watching, she's going to have a heart attack and want to leave right now to go to the Straits. And if, and if you look at it right now, you see you see the multi colors as you start to zoom in. Those colors, and here we are. We're looking straight on top of the the Mackinac. So if we were to say, hey, let's take the big boats, let's go to Mackinac City, and let's kayak across the straits by the bridge and go to St. Ignace. Right now would be a perfect time because the wind's out of the south, blowing to the north, so you'd have the wind at your back, and you got a five-mile paddle across. Yep. In about three... Three to six mile an hour winds. Yeah, roughly just about that. And, and like you said, it's it's wind at your back right so that would be a perfect time to go up there uh if you got the right gear to get out on water but you know we're still talking about big water open expanses so i just clicked for tomorrow and look what the difference a day makes yeah you got tomorrow night well 8 p.m so 8 p.m tonight to, and i just clicked the next day same time 8 p.m and we're doing it looks like Probably 17 miles an hour coming straight out of the north. Yeah. You get across real quick if you can get through the waves. <laughs> I was going to say, you're, 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 you know, and I think we got, I do believe we have some weather moving in we for, for tomorrow. So, yeah. you know, but look at that. You can go to Friday and you can just, you know, if you got a, a planned trip, you know, let's say you're going to be up there Sunday, Monday, you can click on Sunday. Look at that. Back to dead calm. Yeah. You can use it, you know, even on camping, if you're camping like like we're going to be going up to the north shore or the south shore of Lake Superior up in the UP in October, you know, and we want to know what the wind speeds are going to be. We're not going to kayak the big water. We're not even taking the boats with us, but we can actually see what's coming at us, you know, because we're going to be camping right there. So you're going to be over by Antonagon, Lake of the Clouds, right? Yeah, we're going to be at Union Bay Wilderness Park right there. Actually, you're right at it right there in that little notch. So if you were there or well, you're going to be camping, right? Yep. So our campsite's right on the If water. you were there right now, it winds are offshore. Offshore, nice and calm. Yep. What happens tomorrow? Well, it actually stay pretty calm. Yep. Believe it or yeah. not. So it's it's just a great little tool to have. You know, maybe you're flying a drone for photography. You know, or you're you want to you know maybe take a drone up over your hunting property. You know, you can check the wind speeds, direction, and it, it can be used for a lot of other things other than just kayaking. But we find this extremely useful. Right? Let's see. So, Would it be nice to be on the bay? Oh, it'd be perfect on the bay. There you go. So, you know, fishing. Right? Especially if you're kayak fishing, you know, for the guys that kayak fish. Absolutely, because, you know, it doesn't take much to move the kayak. So Exactly. Zero wind would be pretty awesome. So it's it's just a great little tool to, to have on your phone uh, and you can use. And is that free? That is free what you're looking at. You just call that up. I've got the app on my phone. Uh, it's in both the, the Apple Store and the, what's the one for uh, Androids? Google, Google uh, Play, Store. Play Store. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, there's there's you can use it different ways. Okay. Or get it for different applications as well. So, All right. Yeah. Good to know. Great little tool. So it's called Wind Finder. So you used your Wind Finder. You headed up there and you were deciding what you were going to do. And, uh, yeah, I looked on there like that morning, early that morning, woke up, you know, crack of daylight, got up, got on the app, started checking the winds for the day, found out it was going to be almost dead calm, calm to three mile an hour. And I said, we need to pack and go. So we packed a lunch and we, we took off. Well, the next thing was we're looking for, okay, where do we get on the water at? You got to know where to go to get on the water. Uh, we use base map a lot to track our trips. Sometimes we can find some places to get in and out of the water with base map. But the biggest thing we like to use is another app that I've got on my phone that's free. It's called the paddling app. 
Okay. And I think you've got that on there as well, don't you? I do. And a uh, big shout out. Let's see. Let's go back to our live list right now. Denise is on. Uh, Swamp Buck is on. Hey, Swamp Buck. How's it going? You love them dry fit shirts. I'm going to talk about them here in a little bit, too. Right. Adam Wynn uses that app for ice fishing as well, especially on big water. There you go. Yep. Especially Saginaw Bay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You want to know uh, when the ones start to shift? Right. Timmy hears playback in the background. Here's playback. Yeah, we don't hear it. So, yeah. uh, so going over to this app, we'll start here. This is Paddling.com. Paddling.com will give you uh, all of the locations they have plotted on their map here. Let me go to the, you've got it up there right now, and you can zoom down, get down nice and tight. There's the state of Michigan. There's where we were at up in, in that northwestern corner. And it will drop pinpoints as to locations where you can get on or off of a body of water, whether it be a river or a lake. That way you can make sure that you can plan your trip. Well, being that it was Lake Michigan, we were just concerned with a place to get in and off the water at the same place. But it's, it's a lake. A stream, you know, you're going to have to find a place to get out downstream. So, so you could... Our live camera was in Pyre Beach. Yep, and it will actually plot a place for it. It'll give you, if it's just an actual put-in or take-out spot, it'll let you know if there's parking there, if there's a bathroom there, uh, if it's paid parking, which at Empire Beach, that was the last day we'll get to that. But we got on at North Bar Lake, which you can see. Well, you, oh, it was on there. Okay, here we go. That little red dot right there. Right next to the shore. This one right here. That's North Bar Lake. All right. Yep. So you click on it, and then you say location details, and lo and behold, it, should it gives you all the details and a picture of it. Yep, right there. They're standing right at the launch. That is the launch site, and you can see right out through the cut, and you can paddle right out to Sleeping Bear Dunes. And there you go, and there's the big hill. That is the big hill. And it's very deceptive. Very, very deceptive. Right? So it tells you the location. even gives you coordinates if you... Uh, Correct. And you, if you want to get driving direct directions, you can click on that. You so click on it, and it'll bring it up in your mapping system, and it'll take you. You can drive right to it. So right, it's a and great so, little tool. So you started off there. That's where we got on the water at, and let's start throwing up a few pictures from our trip. And once we got out onto the main lake, you look. If you're looking west as you get out into Lake Michigan, to the left is Empire Bluffs, and that's what you can see in the photo here on the left hand side of the screen. And we took a few pictures there. Then we turned, and we our destination was Sleeping Bear Dunes, which was up the coast about oh, a mile, mile and a half. wasn't a real long paddle, but as you can see, look how calm the water is out there. It's it's just it was isn't that amazing? Like glass. You know, sometimes you hear you know the the wind and the waves, and here you are out on the big water, and look how glassy it is. Yeah, it was incredible. It was simply incredible. Um, if you look real close, you can see the bottom, you know, in these photos. We were sitting in about 30 foot of water as we were paddling. Uh, this next picture right here, the dunes are starting to come up there on the right-hand side. If you look to the right of the kayak, you can see the rifts in the sand. Oh, really? On the bottom of the lake bed. And like I said, we're sitting probably probably about 30 feet of water. And it was, it was just so clear. You can see all the details. You can see a lot of fish in the bottom, any rocks, anything like that. This is another great picture of it. You can actually see the rifts of the sand in there, too. But you can see the mirror image off of the water that day. That is pretty awesome. Uh, Nancy Jackson also says that she can hear, like, a, another episode playing in the background. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure what that is. Not sure where it's coming from. All right. So. Is it playing off of yours? I'm trying to. I got everything. Yeah, I don't know why that would be. Right? Don't no know. idea. So. Uh, so you got out there ca kayaking. Um, because you're heading for the big water, mm -hmm. was there any different type of, uh, Adam Wynn's kind of asking this question, uh, is there a different type of gear you're taking with you than typically when you are using, like if you're going on the inland lakes as opposed to, or the inland rivers, or besides, I know you're using the bigger kayaks. Yes. Do you take different gear with you? Yes. If you look here, this is from, from my boat. Uh, for my kayak. You notice the black fabric that is in the, the bottom of this picture here. That's called a spray skirt. And basically you put that on. It's just what you think it is. It's like a skirt that goes over top of you. And it has uh, kind of like shoulder straps that hold okay. it up. And then you tighten it around your waist. And then it has a, a bungee type system within 
the fabric that goes around the cowl of your kayak. So let's say the wave action was really bad that day, but we decided to go out anyway. Any water that comes up on that top does not go down into your kayak. It just simply rolls off. Okay. Okay. And you can also see in front uh, the white handle and the yellow uh, pump in front. It's, it's, it's better in this photo right here. You can see the, the cartridge right there. That is a bilge pump, a hand bilge pump. Oh. So if we do get water inside, you can actually pump it out. Unless you're, if you're taking on water, right? Yeah. Start, start bailing. And you can see I do carry extra paddles with me as well. Right. Uh, do you carry like a Coast Guard radio or yes. anything? Yeah, we, Nancy carries Coast Guard radio with her. She's got it registered. And that's something, if you do have a radio uh, that you buy one of these Coast Guard radios, you do have to register that with the Coast Guard. And they give you an ID number that you have to put into your radio. So if you were to make a distress call, they would know who that radio is tied to. Okay. So, so then they can link it right back to you. Right. <laughs> yep. So... Uh, we uh, Denise asked, do we wear bathing suits or special clothes? Yes and no. <laughs> um, sometimes I'll have a bathing suit on. This day, I think I had what are called paddle shorts. They're, they're kind of like a quick dry. Okay. And I had a quick, my, my swamp buck, uh, or no, I have a t-shirt on that day. A lot of times I'll wear the, my swamp buck ca uh, water camo. That is, uh, that you is know? some great stuff. I, I love that. that. It is so light and, so, and it breathes so well. You know, it can be, we were out in the water, it was 85 degrees, and here I am wearing a long sleeve shirt, and I was as cool as a cucumber. I mean, it, it was nice. So, yeah, we do, we, we're, you know, a combination of both. We kind of dress for the weather. Honestly saying, this water that we were in was pretty cold. We probably, not probably, we should have had bare minimum our wetsuits on, and probably if we would have fell out, you know, hypothermia would, would hit us pretty what you, quick. What do you think the water temperature was? 50, 55 degrees. Yeah, it's a little cool. You know, maybe 60. It was it was chilly. It was real chilly, so. You know, and if you want, you can, you know, hit my computer up. Anybody think, it, we, we're talking about Swamp Buck. Uh, if you go to the website and use the promo code UNJ10, uh, their fishing stuff is, is all on sale right now. And you can see uh, he's got a great selection. There's hoodies, there's, there's short sleeves. Uh, so I see he's kind of getting ready for... Uh, those people that are into football, football training camp started. I see he's got the Green Bay colors here, mm -hmm. and then he's got it getting getting ready. He'll be using selling these a lot here towards the end of the year when the Lions win the division. There you go. Right. So <laughs> he's ready and prepared for that. But uh, yeah, you go over there, go over to the website, check it out, and he's got some great deals going on. And right don't forget now. the neck buffs either. You know, that's something else, especially if you're on the water all day. Uh, a lot of these pro fishermen use those to keep the glare uh, from getting, basically getting them sunburned. Exactly. You know, it's a great buffer uh, yep. to keep cool, keep the sweat off you, wicks the sweat away, and it just does a real nice job. So. Exactly. So get on over to Swamp Buck, get yourself some fishing. Uh, you know, so you talking about other special gear, lunch lunch pail water bottle well, you, you gotta have that gear you know you see this bungee cord i got coming up off the boat there that's tied to my water bottle i got a yeti uh 26 ounce rambler bottle that i use to keep water in you know staying hydrated uh you got if you're out on the water for any length of time you, you just make sure you need to have some food and some water while you're out there exerting some energy having some fun so and the thing about this 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 is not a float this is a straight up paddle. Well, you have to. Well, the, the, you paddle. Yeah, you have to because you're, it, the water is coming, is pushing you inland, toward well, land, right? Well, this day there was no well, push at all. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. So this trip, I think we put five miles on. It was a straight up five mile paddle. You know, we kayaked up to the dunes, and this shot is so deceiving. To look at that, you're like, that hill's not that big. But as you you get closer to it, and you realize. And what am I seeing up there? You know, am I seeing like people or is that bushes or is that animals? What What is that on the side of the hill? And as you start to get closer, you figure out them little dots are people that are bear crawling back, back up the hill, eh? Yeah. So, you know, and we stopped down. We had our lunch on the shore, had the shore all to ourselves. It looks like I don't see any, I don't even see except your footprints in the sand. That was it, man. It was really, really nice. The question from Adam is, what does Nancy, uh, what happens with Nancy when the waves are so big that she loses sight of you? Does she get nervous? She, no, she laughs. 
She laughs. Oh, okay. Yeah, that happened last year. Really? That was a story last year at Pentwater, yeah, as we were kayaking out into Lake Michigan and hit cross waves uh, coming out of Pentwater Lake. Yeah. We were taking on some big, big, probably three, four footers, and I disappeared <laughs> and screamed like a little girl. <laughs> uh, you okay. know, and Nancy brings up a great point. Kayaking is a money pit if you're doing it safely, and that's true. I mean, well, well, that's gear true. costs money. That's true of anything you get into. Mm -hmm. Because you can go down with the rabbit hole of getting every little piece of equipment and, you know, it, absolutely. That just... The picture know. we're looking at now, actually, we've, we've moved on to, <laughs> to another lake. So uh, kind of wrapping up, uh, Sleeping Bear Dunes was really cool. There you, you know, go. It was awesome. It was a great trip being down in front. And, we, and we'll get into a little more here, but I'll, I'll kind of blaze through some pictures real quick. This is on Duck Lake. This was 4th of July day. Or no, no, this was July 3rd. I take it back. This was July 3rd, I do believe. We went out, had a lunch on the shore out there, and then on the 4th, we went back out and caught a sunset. And we were hoping to catch some fireworks on the lake that right, night. Right, okay. You know, so we went out there, hung out, and special gear here, you've got to have a light on. Once sun sets, you've got to have a light on your boat. Okay. And for kayakers that are not motorized, you have to have just a white light. And we do have those on our boats, or our, our kayaks. Keep calling them boats. But uh, they'd already shot the fireworks off on the lake the night before. We were hoping they'd have them on the oh, forest. Oh, okay. And what you can see in the distance on this photo is Traverse City shooting their fireworks off. Okay. So it was a, it was a nice, nice evening. So You know, and that's what made, you know. And did you have any bad weather for the week you were no, up there? No, not a lick. It rained twice. It sprinkled twice. Once at night and once early, early, early in the morning. So the next day we took off and we went to... Lake Dubonnet, and we've seen loons there before, and we wanted to go back and see if we could find them again. Okay. And we went out to a little island, and I took this photo. This is a burrow on an island. Don't know what animal made it. Uh, I'm assuming either badger, uh, maybe... Uh, on the island on, in, on the lake? I, an animal may have gotten out there when it was frozen, you know, at some point right. offshore. But it's, it's quite a ways to this island. So, you know, coyote... Uh, possibly, you know, I don't know, but some varmint, and what you see in the bottom is feathers and I, off of a black and white bird. I don't know if that was a loon, because uh -huh. something I learned from Nancy's son is that loons cannot walk. They can fly, but they don't walk. Really? Yeah, their feet are too far behind them. Huh. So they can't stand up and walk. So they push themselves around on shore. So that's that could possibly be the explanation of this, that one actually... So once you get a loon on land, became dinner. Yeah, right. So you know, I don't know how hard it hard how hard it is for them to take flight, but that's Lake Dubonnet. Uh, and then the next the next day, we took off and we went to we were going to go to Crystal River. We we found a drop in point for Crystal River, and I said, you do know right across the street. I mean, we're talking the road right at the drop in point is a boat marina, and there's Little Fisher, Big Fisher Lake, which goes into Glen Lake, which is Glen Arbor. So we dropped in and we went the other way. You got that up there on the... Right here's Glen Lake, right? Yeah, so we dropped in. You dropped in up here? No, no, that's that's all of Glen Lake. M22 is dividing it right there in the middle. Right here. We went in on the northeast corner. So if you go to the northeast corner of that lake, which would be your upper right, right there, that's where we put oh, in. Oh, right here. Yep, and we paddled the three lakes that day and took off and you want to talk about a surprise and this is the best thing about not having any you know preconceived ideas about where to go what to do um you know we just kind of winged it so to speak but this and water it, and it tells you that you had a portage a half a mile uh half a kilometer away yeah that was uh, on the crystal right yep but on on glen lake when we finally got out into glen lake we were pleasantly surprised at how clear the water was and now we know why the crystal river is so clear but uh here's a good picture i was setting up for a train robbery with uh all of my camo on my water camo and my my neck gator and right you look like you're ready to rob someone. <laughs> so it was a great day on the water but uh yeah that dry fit shirt to me was was priceless because it, it kept me cool it was 85 87 degrees on the water never broke a sweat paddled hard and stayed dry and stayed cool so right and adam when thinks he found sasquatch yeah maybe it's possible and nancy jackson comment is what else did we learn from my kids about woodpeckers and birds uh birds don't have sphincters 
There you go. And woodpeckers, their tongue wraps all the way up around the top and to the front of their brain. That way, when they're, they're hammering, it cushions their brain. All right. So there you go. <laughs> Some useless facts that you need to know. <laughs> oh, you're being called out. You, you didn't go through the tunnel on Crystal River? I haven't got there yet. <laughs> yep. He, he portaged. No, I didn't portage. Mm. So Nancy's here. She's holding up four fingers, four days in a row paddling here at this point. Okay, so we're, we're hitting it hard, doing our thing. And then we finally go over and drop in on the Crystal, and we take off and head to Glen Arbor. A um, little more traffic than I'd like on this river. Other paddlers? Yes. Okay. But, but it was tight and technical, which I really like. You know, it, you had to be on your toes. You had to, you know, watch out for things, maneuver around a lot of stuff. The current was not fast, but maneuvering a 14-and-a-half-foot kayak on a narrow river sometimes can be a little challenging. So so you got a little shallow. It did. We never had to get out, though. We did get into a water fight with two youngsters on the river who either had a cottage there or lived there. They had super soakers. <laughs> and... They, what they didn't know is we had bilge pumps that could shoot just about as far and, and put a lot of water out real quick. And I soaked one of them in the face uh, to the point where he could not fire back. <laughs> nice. But the other one got me good. <laughs> so Denise is asking, uh, with you being face covered like that, do they have trains on the water? Looks like you're going to rob one, right? Uh, I was looking for one. Um, looks like Nancy Jackson is continuing to call you out with the, you didn't want to do the spidery tunnel. Oh, it wasn't so much that. Oh, the spidery tunnel. That was a narrow tunnel. All right, so let me get back on camera a quick second. When we put in, so the road, you can either go to the right and you go to Crystal River, or you can go to the left, go to the marina on the other side of the yeah. road, Yep. and go into the lake. Well, there's a tube about that big Okay. going under the road. When we come back to get the river, I took and pulled my rig across. She wanted to go through the tube. I'm like, no, because you got to lean way, way over. And right before we dropped in the marina, a kid was coming through, and he went under through there, and he screamed like a little girl. And he kept screaming, get off me, get off me, get off me. And as he come out of the tube, he's, like, picking spiders off of them and <laughs> flinging them. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going through there. <laughs> so, no, no. Not doing the spider, no. Spider-Man trick, huh? So, that portage, I took. <laughs> All right, there you go. So, But we did, we shot the tube. Um, I don't think I've got video of that. Uh, no, I don't have video. If you got, if you want to see the video of that, you got to go to TikTok. Yep, that's on uh, on our. Speaking of that, folks, if you have TikTok, go over, find up North Journal on TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. TikTok. Become a follower. Uh, we're trying to ramp that up um, and get that going. Question: Have you ever? <laughs> okay, so first Nancy says, "Here comes the excuses." Yeah, I see that. And then Adam asks, "Have you ever been stopped by the Coast Guard or a DNR?" Not in the kayaks, but I have been stopped on the lake uh, bow fishing at night. Right. Yep. Other than that, no, I've not. So they have not messed with But I will tell you, state of Michigan, if you're in a kayak, you must have a PDF with you. You don't have to have it on, but you got to have it with you. If you don't, it's a ticket, and it's 100 bucks. Yep, and uh, that I, I got stopped while on the kayaks up in the UP on Michigami. Did you? Yep. She okay. came over. I saw her. She, she was pulling a boat into the boat launch, and I was watching her, and sure enough, she came and checked me, and... Had PDF on and showed her my license. Mm -hmm. She says, "Okay, have a great day." Yep. You know. Oh, your fishing license. Yeah. Okay. Crystal River Outfitters, a uh, great little place. These guys keep the river clean. It's Crystal River for a reason because it's clean. I saw one piece of trash in the river the whole trip. Really? And it was a little tiny. So I'm giving these guys a shout out just because uh, they do a great job at keeping it clean. But I will tell you, you will not get past their little outfit right there because the river is blocked after that with with blowdowns and, oh, and, you, just, it. and you just happen to happen to get out right there exactly but huh. they do clean the river and it, it, there was a little foil top about this big around that, like if you were to you know take a top off of a bottle and you peel that foil back yeah that i saw one of those in the river that's the only thing i saw the whole trip gotcha so you know they do a fantastic job at keeping keeping that clean uh, Nan uh the coast guard question and nancy said not even when i got to canada that's for another time right exactly <laughs> uh do you ever fish while kayaking i have with you and with adam yep yeah. uh the, 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 denise is with you mike not no, not uh, no 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 uh blah, 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 blah. all right so we'll wrap this up kind of quick here uh, i want to get through the rest of these photos here because yep, uh this this part was was really cool we went back second to last day which would have been 
Friday, that Friday, last Friday of our trip, we went back to Empire and put back in Lake Michigan because we were going to get sunset pictures. The lake was dead calm again. I mean, just like glass. But the clouds rolled in. But as you see here, Nancy's holding what I call our, our trolleys, sea tugs. We bought these up there. Best $140 we each ever spent. Uh, these things, there's a video. I posted a video on TikTok on them. I'm going to do another one about how they work. It was more or less how you break them down. I can break that thing down into five pieces in about 15 seconds, put it inside my tote or my, my bilge area or uh, bulkhead and still have a ton of room to put other things. These things tow. You got it up, called up there? I will in just one second. It's basically you, you put your, your rig on it, you strap it down, and you pick it up on the front end and just pull it. It is so easy to do. It makes it so worthwhile. You got them there? There you go, right there. These things are awesome, especially if you got a long haul. Right. We use these things for the rest of the week up there. And uh, as you can see over here, we took them right down to the beach. We parked up in the parking area there at Empire, wheeled them through the parking lot, right down across the sand, right down the, to the water, and away we went. It, it, uh, they were awesome. But So how well does that wheel system work in sand? Incredible. It, it floats on top of the sand. These, our boats are probably 50, 55 pounds dry with our gear, 75 pounds and we had no problems navigating through rocks, you know, like pebble-sized rocks, navigating through sand, dry or wet, grass, uh, on the street, no problems at all. Right, and you know, it, it's just one of those things. Uh, it looks like you can, it looks like you have the Sea Tug Kayak and Canoe Cart. Yep. And they do have another version with sand track, track wheels, but it sounds like you're not having any problems with what you're going through. Yeah, no, these wheels, they made it through just fine. We it, it was anywhere we wanted to go, we went. No issues at all. We got out on the water, and we were going to go up. We were going to go down the coast towards uh, the Empire Bluffs, take some photos. We had dinner on the shore that night, and it was just absolutely beautiful. As you can see once again, and we got a little ways offshore this time. There was a point when I got out there, and you can see the water at the bottom 30, 40 feet down. Mm -hmm. There was a point, I'm like, we're a little far offshore, and I look down. There's nothing. <laughs> no more no more bottom, huh? It was dark. And it I'm dropped like, right off. And I'm like, oh crap. <laughs> I'm too far offshore. Right. You know, these bluffs are probably five hundred feet high. Nice. Four fifty to five hundred feet high. I mean they're they're a ways up there. So that the perspective to me is what blows my mind. You lose all perspective of really how big something is because you're in such a big body of water. And I can see how people can get lost out on the water. When it gets cloudy or fogged in, oh yeah, yeah, it's just, everything just melts together. It melts together, and you have no point of reference. And this is our what is what are you doing there? Your sitting bear? Or what, what That's my doing? sitting bear. I yeah. know it. Yeah, and this is day five, right? Yeah, five days straight of paddling. So, and this is when it got a little, I got a little freaky. As far as you could see to the left, and far as you could see to the right, and we're looking dead across at sixty miles to Wisconsin. Okay, clouds are rolling in, and all of a sudden the clouds. And the water meet and you can't find the horizon and it's it's what i call the god moment you feel like you're this speck of nothing in the middle of this great expanse of water and right? sky it's perspective man it's it, it's just incredible what uh, the outdoors can give you you know as far as an experience i mean that right there just says it all so uh last day we went to the top side we went up to sleeping bear for anybody that's not been there that's glenn lake that we kayaked, and from the top side, the perspective is just as real as it is down on the water. It's it's so hard to really get a grasp of just how big everything is out there. Nancy just realized she didn't know you were waving. She thought she thought you were waving, not saying five. No, I was saying five. No, she thought you were waving. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was saying five. Five days. That was her fifth day <laughs> on the water. So. But uh, you can see in the distance, you can see South Manitou Island, which is 18 miles offshore from Sleeping Bear. Doesn't look like it's that far. I mean, you know, here, here's the one that really kind of puts it in perspective. We're on the observation deck looking down, and the little specks are people trying to climb back up Sleeping Bear. Dunes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. You know, you, 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 here's a good perspective here, too. All, all, you know, 
how tall we are, and then all of a sudden you look at that picture and you just go, yeah. Like, you, you go back to what you just said, you're a little bit of a speck, right? Speck and nothing. I mean, it's, you know, these are inland seas. You know, and they had a little thing there talking about the legend of sleeping bear from the Native Americans. And there's the most important thing if you ever go. The this, warning sign. This sign. If you go down and you can't make it be back up and you need to be rescued, it will cost you $3,000. So you better know before you go. And no, I did not climb. I did not go down it. Yeah. How, how far is that down there? Top to bottom? 450 feet from where we were at. Yeah, no. I'll take a picture looking down it. They say the average is about an hour, hour and 15 minutes to climb back up. That bear, makes sense. Bear climbing. Well, that's what you're doing, right? You know, it's a football field and a half, if you think about it. Rescue costs $3,000. There you go. So, so takeaways, big water's big. It's huge, man. You, you, it's, it's so It was so overwhelming. There was a couple times I was looking up at Sleeping Bear or the uh, Empire Bluffs, and I got vertigo, and my head started spinning, you know, and I, I kind of, like, got disoriented, and I had to, like, stop, reground myself, look at the front of my boat so I could get my sense of direction again and get my, my head back straight. Okay. You know, it was it's big. Right. Well, yeah. It's... <laughs> you know, and the paddle app and wind finder. If you're out on the water, man, those things are, are just great free apps to use, and I use base map to track all my trips with. So, good stuff. Yeah. Mark Coleman's at it again. Okay. Yes, I did say how tall we are and talk about perspective. Yeah. I'm not that much taller than him, but I'm just a little bit. <laughs> well, it's good to know next time we face something that's 450, we'll just get on Mark's shoulders. Yeah, there we go and jump off. Walk right, right, walk right off your shoulders onto the top. Exactly. So, so. But no, it was a great weekend. It was good to be away. It was good to have a trip that we didn't really, we planned, but we didn't plan. You know, we had no preconceived notion of like, we got to do this, 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 and this. Right, exactly. It was kind of a free flowing week, and yeah. look at the weather you had. Yeah, it was beautiful. You know, it sprinkled, literally sprinkled one evening for about 30 minutes. And it, one morning, like at 6 a.m. to like 8 a.m., it, it sprinkled. Right. You know, so there you go. But glad you're back. Glad we're back. Uh, while you were doing that, we were deciding to take our fishing trip over with Scott over on the Rock and Reel. Yeah, you guys did some walleye in. We did, and there you have the live shot looking out tonight at the Bay City Yacht Club where he has the Rock and Reel 2.0. And two live cameras in one night. Right? It's a bonus night. It is, and let me get my pictures up. And um, is, this, is this the new boat? So this is not the new boat. Okay. This well, is the one I was on with you last year. Yes. And what he he made some upgrades. He actually did a lot of upgrades. He spent some money. Uh, you'll notice uh, this picture. Uh, it, we 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 were there early. We mm -hmm. left on time. Okay. But he didn't want to leave on time, which was kind of funny, because the wind was actually kind of too calm. No. It was too. It was rocking and rolling a little. Bit. Oh, it was a little too rocky. Yeah. So as the day went on, it was supposed to get more calmer. So he says, mm -hmm. "Hey, we just take our time." But we were just so you know. We were there on time, not Tammy time. Okay. I knew there was something there to be said about the timing. Well, absolutely. And if you see in this picture, uh, he added electronics at the back of the boat. Right there, right down at the center console between the two engines. He now can see the uh, same display that he has up on by the driving, where he drives. Right? So this is his GPS display? Yep. Or is it his depth finder display? Yes. Both? Both. Okay. And, um, so what he did also add is you notice his engines. Uh, what I didn't get a good picture of it. They actually have a wrap on them that says Rock and Reel 2.0. Okay. Getting kind of, as he liked to call it, sexy. Looks like Adam missed his uh, Deer Camp coffee this that morning. We were just getting ready, and you know I was doing my getting uh, ca casual shots. Hey, he's got the same look in this picture, by the way. Yeah, I, it's still no coffee. Right, so we're getting out, heading out. And as you can see, the morning started up. Uh, that does and, look rough. And it, it, <laughs> it was kind of rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, we got to where we were going to go. Uh, Adam, so Adam really wanted to help Scott, so he was starting to put out the lines. Okay. And so one of the one, on this trip, Adam and I learned to do uh, putting out the line and hooking up the planer boards so he was playing gilligan uh but we both were actually okay and, and at one point uh scott actually said i'm just gonna sit here and let you guys handle the boat okay like all right so 
Uh, as you can see, we're setting lines, getting ready. Uh, and and really, it didn't take too long for Denise to, to break the ice, uh, getting the first fish in. And it was a walleye. That's a nice walleye right there. It was. It, it was. Uh, and as you notice, as we go through these pictures, you're going to watch that water. It's just going to go to, to calm. One of the things we did find out, though, the fish were in 14 feet of water. All day? Yep. Okay. You went anything uh, shallower, you picked up more weeds. And one thing also, uh, if you slowed down, um, you picked up other fish. So uh, here... Uh, we got Adam hooked up, and, and the water's still kind of bouncing us around here. And uh, this actually, believe it or not, um, is Adam's very first catfish. I was going to say, that looks like a catfish. reason we caught catfish, boat's going too slow. Okay. So he had to tick it up to, I think, 1.9 to 2.1, I think, is where he wanted to be. Okay. And... Uh, so we, we started, we, we could tell when we slowed down or we were making a turn, uh, then the catfish would hit. Did the wind, uh, going into the wind or away from the wind or crosswind, how did that affect the speed of the boat? I mean, obviously, it, exactly. Down, he, he, yep. you had to adjust and, for that. And so what he also, he, if you see around his neck, is actually a Bluetooth. Now, he can actually uh, work the boat from that handheld thing now. Okay. And uh, But it wasn't working, so we kind of had to go back to the manual uh, there as well, doing it manually, him telling us what to do. Uh, Denise then hooked up uh, on a fish, and this was her very first fish as well. Uh, it was a fighter. I thought the other walleye was her first fish. Well, that was the first fish of the day. Okay. Now this, and I'm going to skip ahead one. We'll just get here. You can see that pole's really bending. Pike? So this was her very first yeah, you guessed it. Boat was going too slow. Okay. It was a catfish. Another cat. Right? So we were playing with the catfish. So we had to speed that boat back up, and uh, there she is with her very first catfish. What was the weight on the first walleye? You know, we didn't. We we don't know what the weight was. It oh, you was, weren't it, weighing it, them? We weren't weighing them. So, yep, that's her very first catfish. Uh, then uh, we would take turns, as we always did. Uh, this is... Uh, Adam bringing in another one. I do believe this is his first walleye of the day. We actually did not catch. We caught a couple to throw back, but most of them were anywhere from 13 and a half all the way up. So keepers now are what? 13, 13. on Saginaw Bay, and we're allowed eight. Okay. I so, know they're trying to take a lot of those. There's yep. a lot right there in the middle size. Exactly. They're trying to. They're, they're stunted. There's so many out there. And as you see now, uh, Adam is 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 helping. Uh, there's one of the small ones we caught. Yep, um, another walleye. But as you see, as these pictures go, the waves are starting to to, oh, no. to mellow out, right? So, yeah, I had my blades bait hat, my lucky new lucky hat for fishing. Your new lucky hat. Yeah. Okay. Did it bring you luck? It did. Um, I caught her. Okay. With the hat. W with the hat. All right. But we did some fishing out there. We had a great time. And as you can see now, uh, Denise, you know, it started to get warm. The waves started calming down, started to get warm. We started to take off our, our sweatpants and our uh, morning, attire. morning attire. And our hoodies were gone. And before you know it, we're down to T-shirts and shorts. What was the the uh, lure of choice color-wise? Okay. What, what, so, was, what were you catching them on? So as it goes, uh, that's a good question. So... We threw out, uh, he started with all colors, uh, black, silver, green, um, and uh, watermelon. And, yeah, they they were kind of hitting mostly green. Okay. So, but that didn't leave out the, the, the black, silver, or uh, the watermelon hit a couple, couple good ones. Uh, I do believe uh, we did catch one on pink cougar. Okay. And so we then had a, uh, it was awesome. And like you see in the back over her shoulder, look how calm that water is getting. Yeah, it looked like Lake Michigan for exactly. us at the same time. Exactly, right? And so it was just awesome. And, and at this point, we were just catching them. We had to get to that 14 feet of water, and then we started hitting them again. And we caught catfish. We caught, uh, what's this one? Oh, I think there's another cat. 
Didn't look like there was a lot of traffic out there. You know what? No, there wasn't. And we're we like so like if you saw off in the distance, we saw the boats, and we're like, hmm. And but we didn't need to go anywhere. We just kept we just kept trolling. And uh, was there a lot of radio traffic that day? No. So there wasn't like people in another area fishing. So actually, he tried calling his uh, the the boat next to him. Yep. Didn't bother going out. One guy had boat trouble. Um, but I think the the morning weather kind of scared people off. There's Adam with his second catfish. Uh, so Adam's saying flicker shads and flicker minnows. What you guys were using? Thank you. I knew okay. the, I knew the, there was a name for them. Another. Catfish. And I'm seeing some here about Pringles and Chips Ahoy cookies, and so you obviously. Well, yeah, oh, snacks. That's because that's Mark Coleman's asking about snacks. I, it was no cosmic brownies for the day, huh? There was no cosmic brownies. You know, and at one point, look how calm the lake is. Uh, we're just kind of we're just kind of trolling along. Um, Captain Scott's doing his thing. Did the bite slow down when the water got calm? No, really. It it, it it we just we just kept putting them on, and before you know it, we had our limit of there was four of us. Mm-hmm. So four. So four. Eight thirty-two fish. Thirty-two fish, and this one on the right hand side, which was Denise's very first pike she caught, and it was twenty-four, I think. Okay. So, a couple of firsts. First catfish for Adam. First pike. First uh, catfish for... And I was the only one that... I think I was the only one that caught a sheephead this time. Okay. Lucky me. Gotcha. Right? So, another good day on Rock and Reel 2.0. It was another great day on the Rock and Reel 2.0. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I was kind of in a Chips Ahoy. Oh, th th that's right. You're right, Denise. There, As we were... Getting ready to leave, and we were leaving, all these little bass boats were heading out. Tournament? Yeah, there was a tournament going on, and he kind of chuckled. Um, he goes, yeah, they're going to get past that point, and they're going to hit those waves, and those little shallow boats are going to start bouncing. Like a little bobbers in the water. Right? And uh, and so, yep, uh, that was another thing. Um, besides learning how to set the lines, set the planer boards, and uh, he also let us net the fish and even had Denise netting fish. It was so much fun. We had so, and he just, just basically let us. He lets you have the experience that you're looking for. Right, exactly. Whether it was. Within reason. <laughs> but, yeah, right. So. Uh, no, no pirate runs. <laughs> no pirate runs. Uh, and it was just, it was just so much fun. And, and like you said, next time, next time Adam and I will probably, he, he, we, he just called out how far. 50 because his reels have line counters right so 50 set it tie the board on get it out there yeah it was pretty fun so you were captaining in a way so to speak we were we were both being gilligan and setting all the bait for <laughs> for captain gotcha and uh yeah i can't wait till next time uh he is now switched over i think it's this weekend or next weekend he is heading to luddington salmon runs he's going to be doing salmon fishing okay so we're gonna we're gonna Try to hook up with him on that side of town. I will give a big shout out to if you can find it real quick. The week we were gone, I think Adam Wynn was over on Lake Manistee and he got into some big water too. And I think they were doing some crappie fishing and salmon fishing both, were they not? Yes. If you can find those photos real quick, give him a quick shout here. Uh, Tammy wants to know did you guys keep the cheeks? No, we did not keep the cheeks. No cheeks for you. No cheeks for us. I was not about to sit there and de cheek them. De cheek That was 32 <laughs> fish. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, but I tell you what, watching him zip those fish, he his his uh, daughter talked mom into buying him this nice, expensive new Bubba knife. And uh, do you yeah, find the Adam pictures? I'm waiting for him to to load up. Okay. Just take it. It's good old time. Yeah, because those are some nice fish. He was landing over there as well. Right. Oh, definitely. Uh, somebody said something. Click it or ticket. Was there was there something involved uh, with the ticket somewhere? Mm. Did somebody get in trouble? No. Somebody not wearing their seatbelt. I was not being responsible. No. There must there must have been a a, a seatbelt violation somewhere. Please. You gotta you gotta, you, you, gotta re, you gotta remind me, um, Adam. Yeah, shooters mix is great. If you know you know you are absolutely correct. Stay tuned for more on that. By the way. Um, I'll have to get the story after the show's off the air. Yeah, <laughs> Sounds like. <laughs> right? For sure. Where, where, I don't 
Go over to the fishing page. Oh, there we go. So while he's doing that, yeah, you, you uh, we talked it. about TikTok earlier. So we have just launched TikTok uh, about two weeks ago. We've got six videos up right now. We're still kind of learning the ropes with that. But for those of you all who are listening or watching right now, uh, go over and check it out. A lot of it right now is kayaking from my trip, some pictures and videos and a quick how-to on that Sea Tug uh, trolley is the way it stows away. It's just really, really nice the way that thing works. So, and uh, other than that, yeah, the camping trip was great. Had a great time, saw some fireworks, had some great food, got a lot of rest, uh, and it was really quiet. That's the thing that really surprised me. Like, like your trip on the water was quiet with not a lot of boats. There wasn't a lot of people. I mean, the campground was full, but it wasn't like there was people just everywhere. You know, it was really nice and quiet. Even the kids were very, very respectable. Except for two girls that almost got smacked by Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy? Yeah. Yeah, they they uh, they, they kind of, like, jumped out right in front of us as we're driving in the truck through the campground and then gave us evil eye, like... And then as I was backing into my campsite, they, they snuck around and walked behind my truck. And the only, way, the only way I knew they were there is my backup camera on my tailgate. Had I not had that, I would have hit them. Oof. Because I, I lost sight of them. I was trying to figure out where they went as I'm back starting to back up because I stopped, put it in reverse, you know, made sure nobody's around, start backing in. And I'm backing up, you know, and I get off the pavement and, and start into the campsite. Right. And they walk. All of a sudden, I see these people walk right behind me. Oh. And it was them. And it's just like, really? What are you doing? You little snot-nosed brats. Right? Okay, so, okay, so, you know, been on the boat, somebody is always put in charge of the counting of the fish. Oh, that click and clicker ticket. Yes. Okay. So somebody was in charge. We won't mention any names, Adam. And he didn't do a very good job. Oh, uh, so you had to go back in and count them in the boat. So we got, so as we were getting towards what we thought was 32, he goes, we'll do a live count. We'll pull them all out, throw them back in. We actually had 29. Oh. So we could fish some more. Okay. Of course, somebody missed clicking because he was probably too excited about catching the catfish or something. I don't know. But okay. that's that's the clicking story. Okay. But speaking of clicking, he went over earlier, uh, July 5th. He was clicking all right. He, he, was, he was clicking some big fish over on the west side over where you were at. Mm -hmm. He was just south of you down in uh, Manistee. Manistee, right? Yep. So, yeah, definitely hooked up with some nice fish. Had some nice water there, too. Look how that's not w wavy at all. Right? So, yeah. So, using beaver lures? That was me up in the UP when I was up there. Okay. But, yeah. So, he, he definitely hooked into some nice nice kings, a king and a brown. And I think he also caught a 14-inch crappie? Yeah. He's got a picture of a... I don't know if he's got... Does he get it here? We are tag team. Keep you from clicking through at everybody's expense here, so... Right. But we're running up towards the end of the show here. You got it? Okay. Right there. there we go. 14-incher. That's a nice crappie. You get a mess of them, that's a good dinner. <sighs> So. Yeah, for sure. So, all in all, Team UNJ had a great, great Fourth of July. We know? did. We did. We had. We were outdoors uh, where we like to be. Uh, whether we were fishing, kayaking, uh, doing whatever. Hold your hands up real quick. I want to see. You got all ten? Yes, I do. We brought all ten back as well. You know, <laughs> those of you wondering, what are you doing? Fourth of July. If you got all your fingers and, and thumbs back when when you come back on the fifth, then everything was good because a lot of people unfortunately did not bring them all their digits back. Ah, uh, you hear some of the stories and it's like really. Usually there's probably some pops involved or yeah, some barley pops. Some barley pops and uh, I heard a kid got an eye literally shot out with a Roman candle. Okay, that's that's good. That was not good. So right. The boy had that weatherman down in Detroit, Channel Seven, uh, a few years back. Might be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, from my understanding, he, I don't think he was doing the firework, but he got lost an eye. Yep. Right? So, uh, but yeah, we're back. Um, now we got the second half of the year. Days are getting shorter. What are we looking at next week? Uh, you know, next week, I'm not sure yet. I know uh, we're going to have another UP person on for this month of July, because last week's was actually June's. Mm -hmm. So, um, got a couple choices to look into. See if we can get one on, and then we'll find somebody to get on. Okay, and I'm going to possibly be up in the Mayo area this weekend, so I'm going to try to stop into the Mayo Deer Camp store, check out the store, check out the digs over there, see if I can do a live drop from uh, from the little cafe and see what they got to offer. There you go. Sounds like a plan for us for the weekend. I think Adam will be out fishing. Uh, I know next weekend I'll be out camping, so I'll definitely be fishing. Um, 
So yeah. How's your rig going? Good. Yeah. Good, everything good. I know you get, you got set up with a new rig this year. Yeah. It's it's a learning curve. It is. It's, it's learning the process. We're still learning. You know, know it, it's, I've had mine for three. Four, this is our fourth season now. Still learning some new things as we go along, but uh, all in all, it's going well. It, it's actually more of a, just a process when you get when you basically get down to it. It's like okay, the way you set it up, the way you take it down. Yep. And uh, Nancy's great at that. She, we, when we unhook, I take care of everything outside. She's on the inside. By the time we both get done, it's it's done. Fifteen twenty minutes, we're completely set up. Yep. A exactly. Uh, should I have showed you my manicure? I actually choose it looks like fishing lures. Yes, you did. They. She, oh, she, I was gonna say did somebody get a hook in her finger. No, 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 no. She she actually had a, a. Did you get a manicure? No, hmm. they were like a hot yellow. Okay. And they looked like the fishing lures. It was, okay. it was great. She put her hand over. Yeah, she yellow hot and top. Yep. So um, they. So we're gonna see about next week yet. We, yeah. we really don't know it just yet. So we. Thank you, Tammy. Dave Rexroth. There we go. So, but yeah, you know, it's just a process. And maybe we'll have to talk, a, you know, we'll have to have a camping night and talk about our campers. And and I that's one thing my cousins have, have taught me and showed me is, is how to do that process. And if you have a problem, how do you work around, work it. Work around it or try to figure it out? Well, yeah, you're 100 plus miles, 200 miles from home. I and mean, we were 140 miles away from home. And what do you do on a holiday weekend if something doesn't work? Right. How do you get around it? You know, and we're going to the UP uh, in October for Lake of the Clouds, and you know we're going to be on the South Shore of Lake Superior and, and, and blow. Hopefully, we don't get a big blow, but first, you might. First weekend, second weekend, uh, second week. And literally, it is the roll of the dice. You know, and we're planning now. I'm look. I'm already starting to find websites and look at different things, different times of the year of when those colors hit. Got a pretty good idea that we're going to be right at it. Hopefully. And looking for things to do, places to go, things to see. Because uh, we're not taking kayaks with us. I'm staying off Lake Superior in October. Well, it's not a good like idea. Like I said, anything in the UP can happen. Um, I've been up there October 1st and had four inches of snow. Right. You so never know. What will Mother Nature have in store for you? It's going to be a mixed bag. I, I, I have a feeling. You literally will get all four seasons in one day. I'm going to take plenty of warm clothes and... Maybe some late spring clothes. I'm not going to take summer clothes. <laughs> You've literally got to pack like that. Yeah. It's like, because one day might be 70 and sunny, and you're yeah. like, okay, I need my shorts. And the next day you're waking up going, yeah, 32 degrees to look cold. Yeah. Talking about process, one quick thing before we go. So this was our first full week of camping. We were actually out seven days in the camper. You got to think about your, your black tank and your gray tank. Yep. What do you do and when do you do it? Okay, and how do you work that process? Yep, exactly. And that's We've got it. a system down, and it works. We'll talk about that maybe uh, sh on a camping show or something. Yeah, we should do that. So, yep, so next week we'll find somebody, and then probably in two weeks we'll get somebody back on from the UP. We're down to only a couple shows with them before November 3, 4, 5 up in the UP. There you go. All right, so that's going to do it for us this week, folks. For those of you listening on the podcast, make sure you go over to iTunes if you're listening to us on iTunes and give us a review. If you're watching the live stream here, give us a like, follow, share. Do that on all of our social media. New social media, TikTok, do the same there, please. And follow us. We're trying to build some, uh, generate some buzz over there and, and a good following as well. So, um, you know, I know people talk about TikTok, different this, that, and the other, but that's where we're at right now, and we're, we're going to give it a whirl and see what we can do with it. So right. it's a different way of showcasing what we do in the outdoors uh, in a little more fun and robust and quick way. So that being said, that's going to do it for us this week. We'll be back again next Wednesday night. Good Lord willing, the creeks don't rise. It's 730. Y'all take care. This episode was brought to you by Deer Camp Coffee, Buck Bates, JPO Game Call, The Island Armory, Hacker Max, Sunrise Archery, and C3 Better the Hunt Technology. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.